Welcome to Innovation Insights. I'm Frank Ballas from Emerald. My guest today is Andres Berger from the Volvo Group. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Frank. Andres, thank you very much for your, your talk earlier. It was very interesting. Um, one of the things that uh, I'd like to hear a little bit more about is what exactly Volvo is doing with electrification in heavy duty vehicles. Uh, we are taking a very segmented, market segmented approach, you can say, to electrification. Uh, first, now we, we are uh, investing heavily in developing battery electric trucks. First wave will be aimed at uh, city uh, distribution, regional distribution, and refuse in urban environments. Uh, typically, trucks up to the uh, 26 tons uh, ranges up to two to 300 kilometers, uh, and and remaining mainly on overnight charging at the depots uh, where they stand overnight. That's the first important way, but it's not a big part of the CO2 footprint in U Europe because they are not, the mileage are short. So the next important step, which we are aiming now is now is, is at regional haul and heavier construction transports. That is a much greater, up to 50, 60% of the European uh, transport work is actually regional. Uh, so managing 300 kilometers ranges and with 44 tons, etc., with battery electric trucks is what we're going to launch in, in a not too distant future here now, because that, that will make an impact on the climate as well. But it will, in, in contrast to the urban applications, require quite a substance, substantive uh, investment in uh, charging infrastructure for destin in, in the destinations, in, in terminals, in harbors, in logistic parks, etc., where trucks load and unload, and also along the highways for public charging, truck stop charging, actually. So, so that, that must come with a joint and synchronized buildup of infrastructure. So it sounds like the on the truck side, uh, Volvo is, is sort of almost there and uh, infrastructure on the charging side is still one of the issues. Do you see there being other sort of impediments, other barriers to the wide scale adoption of trucks? It's, it's probably the business case. The, the business case for our operators, our, our customers, the hauliers, is still very difficult on, on elect these are electric trucks. Uh, the investment cost is, is higher uh, than a, a diesel truck and, and you need to put on quite some mileage to be able to earn that back in terms of lower operating costs. Uh, and, and of course, th this is a, a business with very low margins, uh, quite risk averse, etc. So so we need some incentives here in, in order to kickstart the market and, and uh, shave off some of the uncertainties that that's, is out there always when, when we try to introduce new technology. So it sounds like the, the government regulations are one of the important factors to really move this to the next step. Uh, do you see there being regional differences, uh, you know, between North America, Europe, and possibly uh, the Asian markets? I think that um, in Europe, I think we, we will have a, a, a quite a common roadmap. It will not be evenly distributed across Europe due to different reasons. I, I will foresee or we foresee that electrification in Europe will come in Western Europe, uh, Benelux, the Nordic countries, Germany, France, etc. Uh, before uh, reaching out to eastern part of Europe, etc. Uh, in, in the beginning. I think that the same goes for the US. It will be California, it will be New York, uh, mm -hmm. New York State, a few of those states that will definitely uh, be forerunners in this in this case, and and then other parts of the market will come gradually as costs go down, as risks are uh, lowered, and and uh, uh, you, you get a gradual shift in the in the market. Asia, it's very difficult to judge. If you look yeah. at China, for instance, they seem to be the only player that that can bet on all horses at the same time. Uh, so, so where that will go and, and uh, is, is very difficult to say, uh, I, would, I would think. So, so my, my crystal ball doesn't really stretch that far. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess China has you know, certainly been one of the leaders in electrification of buses. I think they have a few hundred thousand running now. And we hear a lot of you know, talk about all the battery electric they're rolling out. But uh, you know, when you look at China and also Korea, I think Japan, there's been a big 
push to, to hydrogen. And I think yeah. there's a lot of talk in Europe and in North America as well. But when we look at hydrogen, uh, you know, right now, a lot of it isn't actually green. It's made from natural gas. And there's, um, you know, obviously a, a road map toward going to green hydrogen made from electricity. Uh, but there's some pros and cons. People talk about the low efficiency of hydrogen. Could you just talk about, you know, how do you see that? And how does Volvo see the introduction of hydrogen? Are there particular use cases and challenges? Yeah, going back to this uh, segmented approach, there was one very important segment that I didn't mention, and that's the, the long haul, the demanding long haul trucks that mm -hmm. that uh, more or less operates in in twenty four seven mode, and and they are a challenge both from an energy uh, battery size point of view, and also for for the sake that they they do not have the time to charge in, in the same extent as others. So so for that segment, we definitely see fuel cell electric vehicles. It's important for us to, to make this um, emphasis that both are electric vehicles. You, you replace batteries with a fuel cell, but, but to 85, 90%, they are identical vehicles, identical drive lines. Uh, and we see that that's a very promising technology. As you say, the, there is, there is an issue with energy efficiency, overall system energy efficiency. Uh, but going forward in Europe and seeing what, what the role probably hydrogen will play in the overall energy system of Europe and in other parts of the world, we believe that, that uh, hydrogen and, and green hydrogen will become a, a, a plausible f future. So, so that, that is one of the reasons why we, together with Daimler Trucks, in, invested mm -hmm. in this joint venture to see if we can speed up that development and also target the slightly more heavier and, and uh, applications as trucks. Much of the fuel cell development so far has been targeted uh, on, on uh, passenger cars, and it's it's a big difference in terms of durability, etc. So, so we need and power levels, of course, and we need to adapt uh, the fuel cell te technology to uh, truck applications. Mm. Yeah, I, I mean, I read a little bit about uh, what Volvo and Daimler. Uh, are doing together it sounds like a, a huge project. Um, but I guess when we look at the, the sector, and of course, from Emerald's perspective, we're always interested in startups and what startups can do. Do you see there being a role for startups, uh, you know, either in hydrogen, but also in, in just the more general electrification of uh, trucks? I, I think there is. I think anytime we do big technology shifts from one dominant design, and in this case, per, probably to, to one or two dominant designs, we would say that the electric driveline, the electric propulsion is the new dominant design replacing uh, the internal combustion engine. Uh, and I think that that creates opportunities for startups and venture cap in terms of, of, of the, the complementary, the, the surrounding, the ecosystem, the new ecosystems that, that the big uh, giants like ourselves and Daimlers and others, uh, we are not good at serving uh, those niches, those small pockets in the market where, where uh, which for for a, any other company can be a big pocket. So I think there will be uh, plenty of opportunities, particularly related to the services uh, connected to the base technologies that we now introduce. Great. Anders, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts on electrification. Uh, thank you. It was a pleasure speaking to you, and I hope to have a chance to speak to you again soon. Mm, thank you. Nice talking to you.